Are you ready to meet the Lord? Amen. In the air. He's coming. He's coming. Praise the Lord. The King is coming soon. Soon, as some one songwriter wrote, soon and very soon. And uh, so I hope you're ready. Amen. Number one, if you're not saved, you're not ready. Amen. And if you are saved, let me ask you this. Are you living for Christ? Are you glorifying God with your body and your spirit, which are his? They're not yours tonight. Amen. They're not yours. That body is no longer yours. It's God's if you're saved. You've been bought with a price, paid with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. You have no right. You have no right to do whatever you feel like you should be doing. You should be checking in with God and making sure that you're pleasing God with everything that takes place in your life. Amen. Amen. So listen, we're going to get to our study tonight. And uh, we are looking at Matthew chapter 24. We're in this portion of scripture. I'll read starting in verse 4 down to verse 14. And if you could just follow along, uh, verse uh, 4, verse 4, amen, of Matthew chapter 24. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take ye that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, <clears throat> Second, I'll just get this up here, amen. I am Christ and shall deceive many, and you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, and see that you be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. For nations shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you. and You shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. And verse 13, we covered last week. Verse 13, um, <clears throat> But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Verse 14, we'll cover this verse. And Lord willing, the next verse, verse 15. And the, this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. Then shall the end come. Amen. So let's pray. Father, again, bless your word. Bless our time together tonight. Uh, meet with each and every one that are watching this live broadcast uh, Lord God, I pray, Father, that you would touch hearts, uh, meet with needs, help us to think upon your words, help us to take, to clear our minds and our hearts from all the things that we've, we've engaged in today as far as in the secular sense, Lord, and Father, I just pray, Father, that uh, in the profane sense, Lord, help us now to just focus on your word, and Lord God, give us understanding and meet with our needs. Pray for those who might not be saved tonight. Help them realize time is short. You are returning very soon. And uh, I pray, God, you would open the hearts uh, of those who are lost. Lord God, help them to receive you as Savior. We thank you now, Lord. May you be honored and glorified in all that is said and done tonight. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So um, we've looked at these passages here. And... Um, we will kind of transition over to that there for a minute. As you can see on your screen on the left, we have the passages right from Matthew chapter 24. Amen. We cover a lot of ground. We look at verse 4 up here at the top. We talked about deception and false Christ here. You can see many will come in wars and rumors of wars. And again, as I've mentioned so many times, these things that are taking place that are mentioned here are much in a greater intensity, as a matter of fact, um, as we've looked down in the passage here, he says in that verse eight, look at that. All these are the beginning of sorrow. So what he's saying is this here, uh, and again, as we've already studied, you've got to look back on previous lessons on our Wednesday night series, A Life of Christ in the Matthew 24. I don't have time to go over all this, but you need to go back if you're unsure, you need to re-listen to them. Go watch the videos again to help you understand. The beginning of sorrows is likened unto a woman that's going through labor pains, and they increase in intensity. So he says all the things he mentioned there from verse 4 right down to that point in verse 8, 
These are part of the great tribulation. And the great tribulation, and you got to go through our Daniel study and a few other studies we've done uh, in on this YouTube channel through our church and our preaching and teaching, it is not reserved for the church. If you're saved, you are part of the church. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 10, 32, there is the Jew, the Gentile, and the church of God. So if you're saved, you're, you're part of the church. You are part of the church. You're in Christ. You're no longer Jew nor Gentile in God's eyes. So uh, this time is not reserved for you if you're saved. Amen. All those who are lost will enter into that tribulation. And God will resume his program, mainly, mainly dealing with his earthly physical people, the nation of Israel, the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, okay? So the beginning of sorrows, which is also called in Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 7, Jacob's trouble, Jacob's trouble. As I've said so many times down through the last year or two for us being live on YouTube and through the preaching for those who are take in-person services in our church, uh, it's Jacob's trouble. It's not the church's trouble. We are not of the sons of Jacob. We are, we are a spiritual entity. That's a physical uh, a people uh, that God's referring to that are descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So beginning of sorrow. So what happens is in these verses, it speaks of what we would call the beginning of sorrows or the labor pains. So as we've said so many times, some may say, well, there's been people call themselves Christ and there's people, there's wars and rumors of wars. Yes, but in the tribulation time, uh, they will be much greater than you've ever ever seen in your lifetime. As a matter of fact, the Bible even tells us in another passage that these things that take place are so great that he said in verse 21, look at that, verse 21, for then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world. Uh, no, nor ever shall be. How about that? He says, listen, the things that take place there you can't even compare what's going to happen in the tribulation. When you think about the 21 judgments uh, that will fall down in that seven-year period, um, it, it, he said, you can, if you try to even compare it, you can't even, you can't even do that. Take all the history of mankind, uh, 6,000 years and plus, and uh, you can't even come close. You can't even come close to comparing the intensity of, of God's wrath being poured out upon this earth. You say, that is so terrible. Why would God do that? Because the people that enter it rejected the gospel. They rejected the gospel. They, they did not want Christ. They did not want to know uh, the knowledge of the truth of Christ and the, and the gospel message. They, they rejected it. So they enter into that time. Those who accept Christ, receive Christ as their Savior, will not enter in that time. They'll be taken up, removed from here, and praise God for that. Amen? So... So anyway, as we go down, and uh, so we're at the beginning of sorrows, and we talked about some of the suffering and the things that will take place. And a lot of this, again, has to do with the treatment that God's people uh, in, in, the, in the time, in the nation of Israel. As a matter of fact, we even see that down below, which we'll get to, if not a little bit this uh, tonight, especially verse 15, about the abomination of desolation. But here he talks about Judea. He says, those that are in Judea, flee to the mountains. You know what? We're not in Judea. We're in Canada. And Christians are, don't need to move to Israel. Uh, over some years there, a while back, you say, all these Christians are moving here. Why are they doing that? Because they're misappropriating the scriptures. They have no clue. They have no understanding of God's prophetic calendar. They have no understanding. They can't even, they can't even discern the difference between the Jew and the Gentile and the church, the bride of Christ. They can't even figure that out. It's so sad. It's so sad. So they get all misapply passages and so forth. And even talks about the Sabbath day. What does the Sabbath day got to do with the church? Nothing, not a single thing. Oh yeah, I know I might have some Sabbatarians commenting on this channel and saying, oh no, we're, the Christians are supposed to follow the Sabbath. No, they're not. The Sabbath is not to be followed by, by the church. Amen. Praise God. Listen, listen. So he's speaking of the nation of Israel, the book of Matthew, the gospel of Matthew has a Jewish flavor, a Jewish audience. He's, he's addressing it from a Jewish standpoint. So it's got that. It, uh, and we'll see a little bit here in a few moments about the gospel of the kingdom here too. So, so as we look at this here, I want us to keep on moving down through this passage. And uh, so, um, and uh, let's see here where we got here. Look at verse 12. We talked about this uh, two weeks ago. 
uh, the love of many shall wax cold, the iniquity shall abound. You say, it's that, boy, it's terrible today. Yes, it is. Boy, I tell you, Bill, many times worse in the tribulation, many times worse. You can't even come close. You can't even come close to imagine um, what it's going to be like. And then I spoke on this passage last week. We had a lot of challenges last week. Uh, you know, you're, we had uh, problems with the bridge, an accident that kept a lot of our folks out of church last week. And uh, praise God, I hope, I, hope, I hope you folks that didn't get to come, I hope you, when you went back home, I hope you went back on the channel and watched it, amen, to help you understand. Anyway, so I dwelt on that passage. Basically, this has nothing to do with soul salvation. He that endureth to the end, the same shall be saved. As I mentioned to you last week, and again, you've got to go to last week's lesson. I'm not going to reiterate all of that. The word saved is not always used in a spiritual sense. Sometimes it's used in the sense of saving yourself flesh-wise and in the sense of uh, from, from dying. As a matter of fact, verse 22, you go down there and he says, and except those days be shortened, there should no flesh be saved, but for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. What is it talking about? Flesh uh, staying alive. And that's what it is. After 21 judgments, we even saw when we were looking at the first set of judgments, about a quarter, 25% of the earth's population will be wiped out. So let's say it's about 8 billion now. So 2 billion right off the bat will be wiped out. Starvation and all those different things there, hunger and everything, pestilences and all that kind of stuff are going to take place. I guess, yeah, wars, international discord. Uh, we talked about famines, pestilences, earthquakes, cosmic phenomena. You say, man, those situations, boy, the, the flooding out west, and man, my heart breaks for them, those folks in D.C., and I guess in northwestern United States, they're dealing with similar things because they're right near there. Man, my heart breaks to see that, and it's so terrible, and how people have been cut off and, and so forth, and, and the devastation just from flooding. That's, a, that's, pardon the pun, a drop in the bucket compared to what it's going to be like in the tribulation time, in the tribulation time. Boy, I tell you, thank God I'm saved. I'm not going to be here. Amen. Praise the Lord. Oh, glory to God for that. So anyway, let's, let's move up here. Uh, so let's, let's talk about that next verse. So we talked about this verse about this is not soul salvation. It's talking about staying alive, okay? And we, we showed proofs and so forth. Now we're going to talk about this passage. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. He says the gospel of the kingdom. So when you get to this point, the next verse, verse 15, is the midpoint of the tribulation. Or it, it's, that's what it is. Look at this. He speaks of when you therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place, Whoso readeth, let him understand. So uh, if not later tonight on this lesson, I'll see how the time holds here. See if we we got enough time. We might not. Uh, we might come to that. If not, next week. I'll save that. But uh, so what you'll find out is that event, the abomination of desolation, is going to take place right at the middle of that seven-year period. You can break it down in the first half, three and a half year, 1,260 days, and another 1,260 days. And uh, that's how it's broken down in days and months, 42 months on each side, the three and a half years on each side. Same thing. And by the way, you say, what, where'd you get the days from? Well, it, we're just using the Jewish uh, reckoning of, of, of a calendar, meaning a roughly a 30 day uh, month. That's all it is. Okay. And you'll work out the math and it works out to 42 months. Okay. So, so anyway, so let's focus on this thing about the kingdom, the gospel of the kingdom. And what it is, is it's, it's, it's interesting as you study the scriptures, it, the Lord in, in the beginning of this gospel talks about the preaching of the gospel, preaching of the kingdom of heaven. As a matter of fact, that phrase is unique to the gospel of Matthew. And that kingdom, the Jews understood it. And, uh, you know, I, again, I'm not, I'm not trying to, how can I say this, endorse any Hollywood films. But let me ask you something. There is a movie out there called The Kingdom of Heaven. And it's about the Crusades and Catholicism and the Crusades. And again, we're not in favor of all of the stuff that went on there. It's, it's, it's people trying to bring in God's earthly kingdom on this earth. And listen, Jesus is going to fix this mess up that we're living in right now. All the discord, all the problems in the world. Praise God, he's going to fix this mess up. Amen. But the emphasis in that movie is the fact that there is an earthly physical kingdom. It's not a spiritual kingdom. It's an earthly physical kingdom. 
and it's like the, the Catholicism's fighting against Islam, and they're trying to overtake uh, Israel or the, the Jerusalem and all of that. It's a physical thing. That's what it is. So the Jews understood. As a matter of fact, when you study the Old Testament, they knew exactly what Jesus meant here in the sense that they knew that God promised an earthly physical kingdom on this earth. It'd be like heaven on earth, so to speak. Amen. And uh, that is going to happen. But it didn't happen when they thought it would. Amen. That's coming after the seven-year tribulation. And then there's a, some time frame in there in between that. And then all of a sudden, the millennial kingdom will take place. That's the kingdom of heaven on earth. Praise God. That is coming someday. I'm looking forward to that. Praise God. Amen. So anyway, but I want you to think about the gospel tonight. I want you to think about the gospel. And I want you to think about, let's, let's talk about our responsibility. Amen. And then we'll talk about how this is connected to the time of tribulation. In Matthew chapter 28, Matthew chapter 28, if I can get it up here. Let's see here. Matthew 28, and I think it's verse 19. We'll get that up here. The Bible says, this is a great commission, okay? Matthew chapter 28, the Bible says, and Jesus came, look at verse 18. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and earth. He said, Now what? Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptize in the name of the Father and Son of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I commanded you. Lo, I am with you even unto the end of the world. Amen. I want to say something tonight, and I've said it again, especially during this time of COVID, what people need to hear is not all the stuff you've read on social media, news media. What they need to hear is the Bible. They need to hear the truth of God's word. You know what they need? To, you know what this world needs more than anything else? Any other uh, piece of information that's been floating around on social media, on the internet, and on the news media? Uh, there, there's nothing that can come into comparison for the fact that we need to get the gospel, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. We need to get that out to this world tonight. And Christians need to stop fighting and arguing over a bunch of stuff that's going on in the world. And we need to get busy getting the gospel out. The clock is ticking. We had some folks here a couple of years ago. We had a dear sister, a dear saint of God from Ottawa area. She'd come every now and again with her and her husband. Then her husband passed away. And then finally she passed away. But there was one time she brought a friend. And the friend sang a song called 1159. Maybe some of you know it. I never heard it till that time. 1159. Hey, I'll tell you something. That's where we're at, 11.59, just before the midnight hour. We're getting close to that. Are you ready? Are you getting the gospel out? If you're saved, you should be telling folks about Christ. Amen. We got a, a sister in our church who keeps on asking me, hey, pastor, I need some John and Romans. Hey, have you been picking up some John and Romans? Have you been passing? Are you getting the truth out? Are you talking to folks about Christ? That's what we need to hear tonight. That's what people need to hear tonight. That's the good news. That's what the gospel, the word gospel needs. Gospel of good tidings, good news. That's what it is. Praise God. I like what Lester Roloff used to say. You know what pill the world needs tonight? It's the gospel. That's what they need tonight. That's what the world needs tonight. Listen, so Jesus said in Matthew chapter 28, he said it in Mark chapter 16. And then we'll get to this, this message about the gospel of the king. I just want to remind you as Christians here, Matthew or Mark chapter uh, 16, let's see here, and uh, verse 15, I think it is. I'll just get there. No, it's okay. So the Bible says here, look at this. He says, yeah, it's verse 15. How about that? Amen. He says, and he said unto them, go ye into the world, preach the gospel to every creature. Amen. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, and he that believeth not shall be damned. Okay. So the Bible tells us right here, get the word out. That's what we need to do. That's what we need to do tonight. Amen. That's what we need to do. Are you doing it? You know what? The commission that Christ gave us has not changed. Did you know that? Are you doing it? You know what? It's easy to get sidetracked and stuff. It really is. Have we forgotten why God left us here? Amen. So the Bible talks about this and he mentions it again. Look at Acts chapter one, verse eight. Acts one, eight. Amen. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. But, by the way, the, the Acts of the Apostles, God used Luke to record that. It's a continuation from the Gospel of Luke. Amen. So if you can see, look at Luke 24, you com compare it, you'll see the connection between Luke 24 and Acts chapter 1. So you bring that together. 
So he says, but you shall receive power. See that at the top there? I'll bring it up so. Look at this. You shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. You shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and under the uttermost part of the earth. Amen. Hey, listen, you know, these are different areas. Okay, Jerusalem is like a city and Judea is an area and Samaria is another area, an uttermost part. So we kind of liken it to start at home. You get the gospel out here and then you, brand, you spread out from here. Amen. Obviously, we can't be everywhere. That's why God calls men to preach and God calls missionaries to go out to get the gospel out. Amen. You know, you say, well, maybe God hasn't called me, but God's called somebody else and maybe we need to support them and help them so they can, they can fulfill their calling from God and that they can, so that we can fulfill. The only way you can fulfill this, the outermost part of the earth is to, is to support missions. But that's what we need to do. He says, and you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. What he was saying was, in Acts chapter 2, they were filled with the Holy Spirit. The Bible tells us in that day of Pentecost, it was a Jewish festival. There was Jews gathered around from all different parts. They came for the Jewish festival. And what happened? Peter preached the gospel. They got, 3,000 got saved. 3,000 of them got baptized. Amen. And were added to the church. How about that in one day? How about that? Boy, I tell you, <laughs> that's a miracle, amen? And they heard Peter preach the gospel in their own language. How about that? Man, I'll tell you. He said, you'll receive power. He received power. Aren't you glad for that? Boy, I tell you, I think of Peter, and I mentioned this in one of my messages here in Acts chapter 21, or John 21, the Bible says, Peter says, after he denied the Lord, I go a-fishing, I go a-fishing. You know, maybe he thought, ah, oh, God's done with me. We talked about love here in one of the messages recently, uh, last uh, last week uh, on the weekend there. And, you know, the question was, do you love me? Amen. Oh, I'm glad. Listen, I'm glad Peter didn't give up and the Lord encouraged him. Go forward, Peter. God's plan was not finished. And by the way, God's not finished with you yet tonight. If you're saved, God's not finished. He's got something for you to do. Are you doing it? Are you fulfilling the will of God in your life? Are you doing what God told you to do? Amen. I hope so. I hope so. So anyway, so what you'll see is, like I said, you study the gospel. Uh, in the gospel of the kingdom and so forth. You'll see a lot of that in the gospel of Matthew. So you say, well, wait a minute. How is this going to be fulfilled? How is all of this going to be fulfilled? Well, what you'll find out here, you say, you know, when you read this, the gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. And then shall the end come. So what he's saying there is there's going to be some witnesses. As a matter of fact, we should probably turn there. Revelation chapter 14. Revelation chapter 14. I'll get it up on your screen here. Revelation 14. And we'll get that up. And uh, Revelation chapter 14. And let's see here, verses 1 through 7. And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on Mount Zion. Uh, and with them 144,000, having his father's name written on their foreheads. 144,000. Says, I've heard that number somewhere before. Yeah, uh, the Jehovah Witnesses, uh, they had this teaching. I don't know what they teach now, it, well, how they even, you know, uh, rec uh, reconcile this. Because years ago, there wasn't that many Jehovah Witnesses back in 18, whatever it was when it started by uh, Rutherford and so forth. And uh, so anyway, uh, they said, oh, there's only 144,000 that are going to heaven. And then when their group surpassed that number, it's kind of hard to explain. So what, how, how do you explain this thing? Amen. First of all, it, these people, these people who are part of this, as we'll see, it's very simple. God defines who they are. Okay. And you'll see this between this passage and you'll also see it in the passage in Revelation and another passage in Revelation. So there's 144,000. He's saying, look at verse two. And I heard a voice from heaven as many voice of many waters, and as the voice of great thunder, and I heard the voice of harpers harping with their harps. And they sung it as were a new song before the throne, before the four beasts and the elders. No man could learn that song, but the 144,000 and the redeemed from the earth. And these are they which were not defiled with woman. Okay, all oh, the man, I'll tell you, that defines who they are. Uh, it's you, Listen, can't be a woman then. They're man. They're virgins. Not only that, these are they which follow the Lamb whithersoever they go. They, they, he goeth. These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto God, to the Lamb. And in the mouth was found no God, for there without fault from the throne of God. And I saw another angel fly, 
in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel. You see that there? Amen. To preach unto them that dwell on the earth. You know what? Well, I'll tell you, I, I think tonight, as I look at what's going on in our world tonight, and you know what? Uh, thank God. I, I, you know, I think you got to be discerning. But you know what? Um, I believe the gospel is getting out. I believe it's getting out more than ever, as long as we have access to this type of, of, of online streaming. People are using all different kinds, you know, Facebook, YouTube, all these different things, you know, getting the gospel out. Oh, I believe that. But when these guys, these are soul winners, so to speak, as the Bible says, amen. He that winneth souls is wise, Proverbs 11.30. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he that winneth souls is wise, Proverbs 11.30. Yeah, I'll tell you something. You know what? These these 144,000, they're going to be like super witnesses, and they're going to be going out there, and they're going to be witnessing. You're gonna you're gonna they're going to be going spreading the gospel like this world has never never ever seen, leading up to the second coming of Christ. Oh boy, I tell you. And you know what? They're singing the same song. They're singing about the Lamb. They're talking about the Lamb, the Lamb of God. Amen. They're giving the gospel out, the everlasting gospel, the Bible says, saying with a loud voice. Look at that in verse 7. Fear God. Give glory to him. The hour of judgment has come. You know what? We can say the same thing, too, because if people don't get saved, they're going into this time frame, into the seven-year time frame. Amen. Hey, listen, judgment is coming. People say, I don't like preaching. We got to preach love, love, love. What about that? Bible talks about judgment, talks about love, talks about judgment. God's a balanced God. A lot of believers out there in this world, uh, they're very imbalanced in their message. It's all about love, but nothing about judgment. The Bible says there's a hell. As much as there's a heaven, there's a hell. Well, we don't want to talk about hell. Well, how can you, how can you, that's not, listen, I'll tell you something. Christ paid for our sins. He died on the cross for our sins. The Bible says if you don't receive Christ, you'll pay for your own sins in hell. That's what the Bible says. Amen. God loves you. God sent his son Christ to pay for your sins. It's a pride issue with some people. They just don't want to accept the fact that they're a sinner deserving of a place called hell. They think they're too good to go there. No, you're not. All you need is one sin to make you a sinner, and therefore you deserve to go to hell. Man, I'll tell you, people don't like that. They don't like that. They really don't. So when you read this passage in Revelation 14, it's about the middle of the tribulation, which is similar to where we're at in, in the Matthew 24 study. That verse 15 is the smack dab middle right in the middle of the seven-year tribulation time. And uh, so anyway, um, they, they, that, that's where this is. So it's cabinet time, the midpoint. Um, and you also find, if you look back at chapter 13, chapter 13, that's where he's causing the people to take the mark. Look at this, chapter 13, verse 16, he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark on the right hand or in their foreheads. Notice it says in their right hand. Not on there. It's also a tattoo. No, it's not a tattoo. It's in. What is that? I don't know. Everybody's got their own idea. In their forehead or in their hand. And no man, how about that? No man could buy or sell, save he that had the mark, the name of the beast or the number of his name. By the way, that's not the vaccination, okay? Boy, I'll tell you, some people got some wild ideas. They say, well, this is the COVID vaccine. No, it's not. Some Someone says, oh, you know that verse over there? You know, on the seals there, you know, you got the one on the white horse and he's got a bow and the arrow. It's that's the needle that for the vaccination and all has nothing to do with it. People got some wild ideas. Listen, I've been saved now for 47 years. I've heard story after story. I've seen book after book. I haven't read them all. I just haven't bothered. They say this is this and they're all outdated because everything they said didn't come to pass. They're dating the return of Christ. They're saying, uh, you know, USA in prophecy. Or that, no, no, it's all wrong. It's all wrong. Listen, stick with the Bible. Stick with the Bible. Amen. It's just a, it's a problem. Verse 18, and here is the wisdom. Here's the wisdom. Let him that, under, that hath understanding count the number of the beast. For it is the number of a man, and his number is what? 600, three score, and six. Six, six, six. That's what it is. That's the mark of the beast. The mark is a number. It's a number, 600. 666. So anyway, but that's about the middle. That's about the middle of this time frame. Amen. And so there's going to be a global evangelization. Amen. As a matter of fact, there's even, so you got these 144,000. By the way, you say, how do you know they're Jews? I'm glad you asked me that. Let's go to Revelation 7. Revelation 7. Let's look over there. 
Amen. Oh, look at this now. Amen. Okay, the Bible says, let's look at this here. And um, we'll start the verse one. And after these things, I saw four angels standing in the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor any tree. I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels, and to whom it was given uh, to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the tree, so we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. Oh, look at this now. And I heard the number of them that were sealed. And there were sealed 144,000 of the tribes of Israel. And then he lists the tribe. Look at this. Tribe of Judah. Amen. 12,000. And it goes through all the list there. He goes through all. Amen. What is this? This is Jews. Not only are there Jews and they're virgins. Um, and they're, listen, and they're men. They're men. That knocks out a lot of people right there. God's going to take this group of people, 12,000 from every one of those tribes, and he's going to use them to be super witnesses, so to speak, to get the gospel out. Well, what else is he going to do? He's also going to take two witnesses in Revelation chapter 11. Revelation chapter 11. Let me spend a little bit of time with time we got here. Amen. We're moving along here. Revelation 11. Let's go over there. Revelation 11. <clears throat> Revelation chapter 11. And uh, so, get my place here. Okay, Revelation chapter 11. And uh, so look at verse, um, let's see here. And uh, verse, uh, verse three, verse three. And I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy 2,000, uh, 203 score days, clothed in sackcloth. These are the two olive trees, the two candlesticks, standing before the God of earth. And if any man will hurt them, fire proceeded out of their mouth and devour their enemies. If any will hurt them, uh, he must in this manner be killed. These have the power to shut heaven, to rain not in the days of the prophecy, have power over waters, to turn to blood, smite the earth with all the plagues uh, as often as they will. So let me just stop there for a minute. A lot of people think, okay, you know, there's a little bit of, uh, not arguments, but people take us different sides on this. Listen, we can't be absolutely dogmatic, but I do lean on the fact that these two here are Moses and Elijah. Some say, oh, there may be Moses in you and uh, uh, Enoch. And uh, so, but anyway, but it's, it's interesting because Moses and Elijah represent the law and the prophets, as you can read. And, um, and the thing is that comes up with these heal, these powers that they had. And what happened with Moses when you read in Exodus chapter 7 through 12 and you read in 1 Kings about Elijah, amen, you see these miracles that took place, okay? Also, I kind of lean on that is because in Matthew 17 at the Mount of Transfiguration, who's there? Moses and Elijah. So I kind of lean on that. I mean, listen, this is not a matter of salvation, whether you agree or not. Oh, I'll tell you, some people fight over this stuff. Anyway, you know, you can believe what you want on this thing, as long as it doesn't contradict the scripture. It doesn't identify who they are exactly, but I believe I lean on that. So anyway, so you got the 144,000, then you got these witnesses, okay? So they're going to have some power. They're going to produce, uh, their people will, there will be people saved. There will be people saved. Um, and they're, they're going to preach. They're going to preach the word of God and the gospel, amen? And, um, so anyway, the Bible says in verse 5, anybody tries to hurt them, what's going to happen? Look at this. And if any man will hurt them, fire proceeded out of their mouth. They'll devour their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. How about that? Amen. The two prophets, what are they? These prophets, these, these preachers, these witnesses, they're, they're enemies of the Antichrist. Uh, they're enemies of, of those who reject Jesus Christ. Amen. And worship for uh, the beast during the first half of the tribulation. Amen. And uh, so um, anyway, and then, so the unsaved of the world, they'll despise them. They will even refuse. Look at this. As you go down here, um, the Bible says in verse seven, when they finish their testimony, let me ask you this. Have you finished your testimony? Your job's not done. Amen. You know what? When he takes us home, you know, your job's done. You're still alive. Amen. Boy, I tell you, some people, the way they, they're living, some Christians, the way they're living, you think, oh, they're all finished. You know, there's nothing more to do for Christ. No, I don't know where you're getting that from. There's so much more to do. Amen. We need to do all that we can to reach as many people as we can. And we need to encourage the saints of God. 
We need to keep the profane and vain, as Paul wrote to Timothy. I, I preached on this. I'm not going to preach it right now. Profane and vain. Vain, empty, profane, secular. That's all we want to talk about. He says, avoid them. Avoid profane and vain babblings and shun profane and vain babblings. God says, listen, listen, especially you're saved. You know, can't you talk about God? It seems like everywhere you go, everybody's talking about COVID. Hey man, it's pretty sad. We can't talk about anything else. Oh, people are afraid and fear. Listen, if you're a Christian, you shouldn't be overcome with fear. That didn't come from God. The Bible tells us that. That spirit didn't come from God. It came from your flesh. came from the world. came from the devil. You got your head buried in news and social media. That's why you're full of fear. You need to spend more time in the Word of God. Amen. That's how you combat that. You got to renew your mind. The renewing of your mind, Romans 12, 1 and 2. Are you renewing your mind or you're filling your head with all of this stuff? It affects your heart and your attitude. Amen. We need, listen, we need to encourage each other and we need to, listen, if we are being overcome of new, by the news and all this information and all this stuff about COVID, I'm telling you right now, how in the world do we expect the unsaved world to come to us and say, I want what you got when they can't see anything different in your life. Amen. There's got to be a clear difference in our behavior and our conduct and what we're talking about. What we're, I always try to change the conversation. Always, but it comes up. It just it, People are consumed with it. They're consumed with it. Amen. We need to talk about Jesus. Let's talk about Jesus. The King of Kings is He. Amen. That's what we need to talk about tonight. That's who we that's that's who we got to talk about. So these witnesses, what happens? So their time was done. The beast came out of the bottomless pit. You see that shaded there. Made war against so overcome them and killed them. Watch this. And their dead bodies lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Son, but where as also our Lord was crucified. And they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations will see the dead bodies three days and a half and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. Well, I'll tell you, people hate, hate the truth. They hate the gospel. And I'll tell you, the devil hates you tonight if you're saved. He hates you. He know he can't get your, take your soul and dra drag you to hell. So what will he do? He'll, he, he wants to encourage you to go out there and waste your life. Be wasted. God wants us to be used for him. Amen. Look at this. Some people even liken this to Christmas. <laughs> I don't know. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry. <laughs> Amen. And shall send gifts one to another. Why? Because these two prophets tormented them that dwelt on the earth. Well, these people, those Christians, the sooner these Christians and these church folk are done out of this place, the way the world looks at us today. Amen. We're living in a terrible place. We're living in terrible times, folks. And after three days and a half, the spirit of life from God entered into them, and they stood upon their feet. And great fear fell upon what saw them. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying, Come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud, just like in Revelation 4 1. It's a picture of a rapture. This is like a rapture. God's taking these ones up. Amen. Come up hither, guys. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. I can't wait to hear that. The Bible even tells us. Look at that in uh, Revelation chapter 4, verse 1. Uh, one. Here, I'll just read the rest of this. Verse 13, in the same hour, there was a great earthquake, 10th part of the city fall. Earthquake, slain uh, of men, 7,000 remnant were affrighted and gave glory to the God of heaven. Look at Revelation 4, 1. Revelation 4, 1. Looks like we'll just cover this one verse. Amen. Amen. I love this. Praise the Lord. Can't wait. Can't wait. Can't wait. Look at this. And after I looked up, and behold, the door effectual or door was opened on in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was were a trumpet. Amen. The trump of God. Amen. Which said, Come up hither, and I will show these things which must be hereafter. Well, I'll tell you, you got to go back in our studies, got to go back in our Daniel study, got to go back through this life of Christ. If if you want to be directed to any of these studies, I'll help you understand that you're not going to be here. You say, well, what in the world? Did God give us all these books that we don't even need to worry about? God, God gave it to us for our learning, to teach us. You say that stuff in the Old Testament, all that Old Testament. Well, we don't have to do all those things. That's right. God wants you to read it. 
There's pictures and types in there. And plus this, we need to warn people about this. We need to warn people. When you study the chronology in the book of Revelation, Revelation chapter 1, 2, and 3, the church is present on the earth. Bang, all of a sudden, come up hither, taken up. They're out of here. You don't see the church until later on when we're coming back with the Lord. Amen. Boy, I tell you, the Bible says second coming of Christ, chapter 19, verse 11. Look at that, chapter 19, Revelation 19, Revelation 19 and 11. And I saw heaven open, behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon it was called faithful and true. Amen. And in righteousness doth he judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire. You read that in Revelation 1 about the eyes of Christ. Woo. And on his head were many crowns. Amen. Praise the Lord. And he had a name written out that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. His name is called the Word of God. John chapter 1. Amen. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. And the Word was God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Amen. And the armies which were in heaven followed upon him in white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword that with it he should smite the nations and he shall rule them with a rod of iron and treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of almighty God and he hath on his vesture on his name a thigh is, uh, on his thigh a name written king of kings lord of lords praise God amen oh boy I can't wait for that I can't wait for that listen you and I tonight you're saved. You have opportunity to get the gospel. So I don't know about that. Yes, you do. And I know this mask that you wear sometimes in public that you got to wear in certain places. It kind of hinders. I understand that. But you know what? You can still do something. You need to get the gospel out. You need to talk to folks about the Lord. This time is running out. The Bible tells us, and I'll, I better close with this, and then um, I'll... I'll, I'll Continue on next week. Like I said, it. I wasn't sure if I was going to get to verse 15. <coughs> but I want you to turn over. Let's see here. Get the passage here. Just always want to make sure before I turn it over there. In 2 Thessalonians, that's what it is. 2 Thessalonians. I don't have it in my notes here. 2 Thessalonians. It's interesting. 1 Thessalonians at the end it talks about the rapture, taking up, meeting the air. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 to 18. Interesting. In the next book that Paul wrote to the believers at Thessalonica, look at chapter 2, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Look at this. Now we beseech you, he's begging them. Brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, by our gathering together unto him, we'll be gathered together. You know what? There may be some things that we can't gather. Amen? Church and all that kind of stuff. We can't gather. We can't do the things that we'd like to do. Amen. You say, well, that's terrible. I, you know, I can't change that. But listen, we'll be gathered someday. And no government will stop that. We'll be taken up out of here. Amen. Praise God. They won't be able to stop that one. Good luck. <laughs> so what did he say to the believers at Thessalonica? Okay, they had some issues there. They, 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 they thought, oh, maybe they missed the rapture. They're going through the tribulation. Maybe you think that tonight, too. Maybe you're so, oh, so confused. You heard all this stuff on the Internet. You heard all these different preachers preach that the church is going through because God's got to clean up the saints. No, he doesn't. God doesn't have to do that. You're righteous in the sight of God if you're born again. It's Christ's righteousness that's imputed, placed upon you. It's not yours. Amen. Yes, we got to deal with sin. But listen, you're saved. You're being taken up. The Bible even tells us in 1 Corinthians 3 that there will, some will be saved yet so as by fire. What does that mean? When their works are judged by the Lord Jesus at the judgment seat of Christ, they may have nothing that remains. There won't be anything because everything they had was, was likened to wood, hay, and stubble. Those are works you did that didn't amount to anything for Christ, and you did it with a wrong attitude in the spirit. The ones that abided were gold, silver, and precious stones. Those are the ones that are the good things that you do for Christ. You're doing it for the right reason. You're serving God. You're putting God first. Amen. Can you imagine the life that a person would have to live to end up with nothing at the judgment seat of Christ? I always like to think in reverse when I think of that passage. 
There will be some believers that will get there. That, man, I'll tell you, they wasted. Like I've said so many times in my preaching, it's not how you start, it's how you finish. Many people have started on the right plane, but didn't finish well. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Those are the words you want to hear. If you don't finish right, you won't hear those words. I want to hear them, and I hope every believer, you be faithful to God. Don't quit. Don't give up. So what does he say? He says, I beseech you, brethren, by the coming of the Lord Jesus, to gather. Watch this. That, what? That you not be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter from us, as at the day of Christ's end. Listen. Too many of God's people are shaken in mind because they're watching too much stuff on the internet. They're troubled. They're shaken in mind, neither by spirit, look at little small as your spirit is not right. You got your spirit's bad. You say, I wonder what my spirit, you know, maybe you watch all this stuff and you, they have a critical spirit constantly and you watch this stuff. Well, you become critical yourself and you start treating other believers and the lost in a critical manner. You got a bad spirit neither by spirit nor by word. You know, when people talk about this stuff, all this stuff that they're shaking people's minds and troubling you and troubling you as believers, people spoke about things and you're troubled by it. You heard this, nor by letter. You're, I don't believe in changing the book. The book says letter from us, but let's pretend, hey, internet, what did you read that, that troubled you and shook your mind? Didn't the Bible tell us when we did our lesson here, I think it's in Luke 7, talks about the, 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 the storm came in the house that was built upon the sand and there was one that was built upon the rock. The Bible says the one that was built on the rock, which is a picture of those who have put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ, he says, it won't even shake it. We've got too many Christians that are shaken right now, unfortunately. He says, let no man deceive you. Let no man deceive you. Amen? I'm telling you, for, uh, by any means, for that day shall not come except except there be a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, the man of sin, the Antichrist. He'll be revealed. He won't be revealed till we're taken out of here. Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshiped, so that he is as God sitteth in the temple, showing himself that he is God. We'll talk about that next week, the abomination of desolation. And remember ye not that when I was with you, I told you these things, and now you know that withhold it, that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. It's right here now, the mystery of iniquity. The spirit, a bad, evil spirit. It's in this world tonight. And then that shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Amen, well, I'll tell you. Anyway, um, and even... Uh, in him who, whose coming is after the working of Satan with all powers and signs and wonders and with all deceivableness and unrighteous in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. How about that? Amen. They did not receive the love of the truth. And for this cause, God shall send strong delusion that they should believe a lie. You say, oh, I, I think, you know, boy, I tell you, I'll just wait till the tribulation and I'll get saved. Good luck. Bible says this, God will send a strong delusion. You didn't want God to begin with when you get into that time frame. There'll be such delusion, you will be having a hard time believing the truth. He says what? That they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. I wouldn't wait to get into the tribulation. There'll be 144,000, then there's other two witnesses, like I said, Moses, Elijah, prob possibly, probably. Well, I'll tell you, they're, they're, they're going to reach people. And we'll talk about that as we go down to the passage after verse 15, how that God will preserve them in the tribulation time, a remnant of the nation of Israel. How about that? Amen. Listen, you think it's challenging now? It'll be really challenging if you don't get saved tonight. Amen. Well, amen. Well, listen, we got to stop there. Lord willing, uh, we'll, we'll pick it up again in the um, next week. Amen. And hopefully we got in person and online. Amen. And um, so anyway, but anyway, God bless you tonight. Let me pray. Father, thank you again for this evening. Thank you for the folks that have been able to come and watch. Uh, Lord God, and partake of the study. Lord, I know we only covered one verse, but God, again, just bless and work. Help us to be the witnesses tonight that we ought to be. We got a message, a message of good news 
oh God, of good tidings. Help us, help us, Lord God, to, to get that message out to this lost and dying world. Pray you encourage the saints tonight. We also pray for those who are lost who've heard this message tonight. God, help them to connect with us. God, we'd love to give them a John and Romans. We'd love to send that out to them. We'd love to, to, to give them, to talk to them and, and, and share the gospel with them. So God, God, please do that tonight, Lord God. So Father, we do thank you. We do praise you. I'll be with each and every one. God, again, whatever challenges folks are facing tonight, Lord God, just help us, help us to stand strong in you, Lord, in, in, in Christ, and just use us for your honor and glory. And we'll thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, listen, God bless you, Lord willing. We'll connect with you again.